What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica, and we are down here. Peace, y'all. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica, and we are down here to discuss some hot topics, trending topics, what's going on on the vlogs and stuff like that. Uh, not not too many things to talk about, some things to talk about. So first thing I have on my list here is Dr. Dre finalizes his divorce um, with Nicole Young for $100 million um, for nearly 24 years of marriage. So it says that the after 18 months of a legal back and forth this is at, this is from NBC News uh it says after 18 months of legal back and forth rapper and producer Dr. Dre has finalized his divorce from Nicole Young with a 100 million dollar settlement sources familiar with the situation told NBC News on Wednesday all right so they have two children together Truist and Truly under the terms of the settlement, Young will get $50 million immediately and another $50 million in a year. The sources say adding that she is not eligible for spousal support. Young leaves a marriage with all of her jewelry, as well as four vehicles, a Rolls Royce, a Range Rover, a Escalade, Escalande, a limousine. Girl, what you gonna do with that? <laughs> And a spider motorcycle. Here, you can have the Escalade limousine. <laughs> Girl, let me shut up. Young 51 is required to move out of their Malibu Beach home by the end of the month. That is today, December 31st. Girl, it's a mess. Um, and, and she must pay her own legal fees under the agreement. Dr. Dre 56, who is worth $820 million, will keep the lion's share of his wealth, including his master recordings, trademarks, and interests in various partnerships and trusts, According to the sources, he will retain all Apple stocks, which includes proceeds from his sale of Beats by Dre, which was bought by Apple in 2014 for three billion dollars. The musician, the musician will keep six vehicles and seven of the couple's properties. That's where I was like, you didn't get any properties. Oh, God. OK, that's OK including the Malibu home, two homes in Calabasas, and four properties in the LA area, including a $100 million Brentwood estate, the sources say. Rolling Stone reported that Dr. Dre was delighted that his ex-wife would only get one-fifth of his liquid assets, and she would have gotten more had she settled earlier or sooner. It says Young signed a prenuptial agreement when the couple married in 1996, which she contested saying it was signed under duress. Um, Young initially filed for divorce in 2020, citing abuse and that she had caused, I'm sorry, and that she said caused post-traumatic stress syndrome. Young said in court documents that Dre held a gun to my head on two occasions and punched me in the face in 1999 and 2000 dre has vehemently denied all allegations yeah yeah you ticking time bomb we absolutely don't believe that you did that we we know we you didn't do that girl like i was telling marlene yesterday dr dre his energy is like a ticking time bomb if you've ever been around him if he has a feeling like he's just like like this boom that's how it's going to go. <laughs> That's how he looks. That's how he looks. And personally, I think he has a lot of internalized homophobia because let me, let me shut up. Let me stop talking about Dr. Dre. I do think, I do think he has some issues with, um, that have nothing to do with me. So yesterday I was like a hundred million dollars. At first I was like, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. That's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. But then I heard somebody say she would be broke in 10 years based on her lifestyle she'll definitely have to change her lifestyle she'll definitely have to make some adjustments but if she makes the right investments at a hundred million dollars she will not not have to work anymore ever again so i don't think that she should um or anybody should feel like this is a loss it is a lot of money 
but in comparison to what he has and they're saying that she would have had more money had she settled sooner I don't believe it. I was just really hung up on the properties, not getting any properties, at least two properties. Who are her lawyers? So you don't hire them in your divorce. I was like, this is a mess. So for one thing you have to understand is, or what you can learn from Nicole, if somebody puts a gun to your head, don't go back to the relationship. If somebody punches you in the mouth, don't go back to the relationship. Just don't go back. You don't have to go back. No amount of money is worth it. Now, for her time served, she what she received a hundred million dollars. It I thought it was I thought it was a pretty good settlement, but then I was like, when not compared to what they said, I was like, Well, that's not enough money. I need her to have more money. But then, you know, when you put it into perspective, a hundred million dollars is a lot, a lot of money already. So um, hopefully she'll make some smart investments. Don't get the referral to the investors from your lawyers because they suck. Um, but it is what it is and we'll see. I think she should write a book and then have it adapted into a 90 minute lifestyle movie or lifestyle lifetime movie or HBO, put it somewhere. But I definitely think she should tell her story. If you had these experiences, tell them, write a book about it write a book about it, go on a book tour, get your money from that, tell your story. I think that she should definitely do that. So that was it with that. Tell me what you guys think. Do you you guys think she got stiffed or do you guys think that she, 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 she got, she made out, she made out good, you know, just based on her experience and what she had to experience. It's like, okay, what you had to endure a hundred million dollars to leave the relationship to Lou, right? So y'all let me know what y'all think about it. All right. So the next story that we want to talk about is Ghislaine Maxwell. Ghislaine Maxwell, we all know is, um, the, um, girlfriend and, um, procurer of Jeffrey Epstein's, what they call the pyramid scheme of sex trafficking, honey, it really was. Um, so it says after the month long trial fit featuring story, this is from AP news, the verdict capped um, a month-long trial featuring its sordid accounts of the sexual exploitation of girls as young as 14 years old, told by four women who described being abused as teens in the 90s and early 2000s at Jeff Epstein's palatial homes in Florida, New York, New York, and New Mexico. Jurors deliberated for five full days before finding Max, Maxwell guilty of five of six counts with the maximum print, prison terms for each charge ranging from five to 40 years in prison. Maxwell faces the likelihood of behind bars, an outcome long sought out by women who spent years fighting in civil courts to hold her accountable for her role in recruiting and grooming Epstein's teenage victims and sometimes joining in the sexual abuse. As the verdict was read, Maxwell was largely stoic behind a black mask. Afterwards, she could be seen pouring herself water as one of her attorneys patted her back. She stood with her arms folded as the jury filed out and glanced at her siblings faithfully in attendance each day of the trial as she herself was led from the courtroom. She did not hug her lawyers on the way out, a marked change from previous days during which Maxwell and her team were often physically affectionate with one another. One of her victims, um, Annie Farmer, said she was grateful the jury recognized Maxwell's pattern of predatory behavior. Um, she has caused hurt to so many more women than the few of us who had a chance to testify in the courtroom. I hope that this verdict brings solace to all who needed it and demonstrates that no one is above the law. Even those with great power and privilege will be held accountable when they sexually abuse and exploit the young. (sighs) Says no sentencing date has been set. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, it, is, it is the irony of a woman taking a fall for a man's wrongdoings, but not just a man's wrongdoing. She actually participated in it. So it wasn't just him and she wasn't being, you know, uh, manipulated into doing anything. She helped him. Um, and so you must go down to too bad. He's not alive. Too bad. He's not alive to see um, his um, to be judged by his peers. 
um, he conveniently was killed. Oh no, wait, they said he died. How did it, how, how did he die? Did he, honey, I don't believe Jeffrey Epstein is dead for a second. I don't, I don't, I don't, maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I don't think he's dead. I, I don't, I don't think he's dead at all. Um, and so, well, she's going to go down. You're going down, Ghislaine. You're going down, Ghislaine Maxwell. And that's what it is. And we love to see the end of that. And I'm glad that, again, that all of the people who were affected by their violence um, now feel some kind of closure that this woman is going to serve time for her actions, you know. And I was hoping that she would name people. I don't know if we need to go back and read the court records, but I felt like I wanted her to name um, the people who were involved. I felt like the news coverage of the story was very um, suppressed. I didn't see too much about it. Um, so a lot of things, you know, a lot of people are speculations about why we didn't see it in the news that much. But I was hoping she would name some people and we could see it like in testimony or something like that. But maybe you have to go read some court documents. But I imagine that if it was anybody of um, notoriety, we would have known about it. It would have been definitely all in the news. I don't know what's going on with this scarf. I have pushed it back a little bit. That's why you can see it's on my hair. So y'all let me know what y'all think about that. I'm happy that that is all said and done. Um, all right, so there was also, let me go to Instagram, Ari Fletcher. I try not to talk too much about um, the girlfriends of rappers, um, but they seem to stay in the blogs. They seem to stay in the blogs. And Ari Fletcher is money bag yo. Uh, his partner, and she was on a podcast and explained, this is from the Jasmine brand, Ari Fletcher jokingly references having a gun pulled on her while talking about her non-toxic relationship. He's trying to make me grow up. My whole thing is while you sitting up there with your oatmeal pie face manufactured, everything is manufactured, girl, who are you? Um, here it is. I want you to hear it. I want you to hear what she says. It's the thing where we like, like, we like to talk about it. Like, I'm, okay, I'm mad, this one I'm mad, and this one needs to happen moving forward, so this don't make me mad no more. We like world, though. It's weird. I've never been like this before. They think they better than us. Bro. No, no. We, we always out, been like we that. Community and shit out. No, we have not always been like that, I swear. But it's just not toxic. That's know. a blessing. No, I know. I don't think I've ever had something that wasn't toxic. Because I think I'm a toxic. He's trying to make me grow up. I'm about to start some shit tonight. I don't want to do this no more. Yeah, right. That's what's up, though. I feel like a man is supposed to do that, like, show you shit or make you feel comfortable enough that you can trust him to try something different and shit like that. Like, even if you toxic, even if you wild, you crazy, whatever, the right nigga can really, like, show you the way. No, because he be... This he is some ignorant like, conversation. Bitch, how old is you? Like, grow the fuck up. Oh, he, he gets you. Yeah, you. he do that to me. Then that's he makes me be like, okay, let me, because I used to pack my shit up, like, bitch, I'm leaving, fuck you, bruh. That's Facebook me. Facebook in the flight. Really never booked the flight. Facebook in the flight, like, call my manager, like, bitch, book me a flight home, fuck this nigga, da -da. you know, call my mama, throwing shit, breaking shit, fighting, and then, like, now you gotta stop me from leaving. But I was never going nowhere. Oh, yeah, you just talked to Like, pull your gun out and show me, like, bitch, leave. I wish you would walk out the door. Right. Like, uh, I'm not she gonna good. shine. She gonna shine. <laughs> He's from Chicago. You already put your gun out. <laughs> I'm gonna just sit down because I got a son. I'm not trying to die. I got a son. So I'm only staying because I got a son. I don't want you to shoot me. That's the most Chicago shit I've ever heard in my life. I've never. That should be like under the Chicago flag. It should be just like that. Yeah. A Chicago love story. I'm here for it. Mm. Now he just called me childish and I just feel stupid and I'd be like, okay. You apologize? I know. I just said we talk about it. You don't say I'm sorry. I don't do no wrong. Are you submissive? Yeah. So am I. 
I bring niggas plate, y'all, and pick it back up. I do. I don't fuck around. People just think I'm going to fuck you, nigga, change my plate. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm no, so you're in a toxic relationship and still being submissive. Y'all some dummies. I'm sorry. That's just dumb. It is so dumb. It is so dumb. And nothing is cute about having a gun pulled out on you. And then she comes out and she doubles down. She doubles down and she says, you know, I don't know why y'all all in our business. Girl, what is this so crazy? It's like, girl, you put your entire, you, you don't put your entire business, but you put your business in the street. So people are going to consume it and then therefore have an opinion about it. So it's weird to me, but she doubles down and she says, we don't care. The She doesn't care about triggering anyone who may have ha been a victim of domestic violence. And so she don't care. I would, let me see if I could find when she was like, she don't, I don't care. I don't care. Um, I think Apple Watts came out and said something about her saying that she doesn't care. It's just insensitive and she will be the first one. And it always happens like this. It does. It always happens like this. You don't understand until it happens to you. And unfortunately, when it happens to you, you are going to want some support. You're going to want support. You're going to want people to understand where you're coming from. You're not going to want anyone to say, I don't care that some man threatened your life with a firearm. But I don't know. I don't even know what to say. There's nothing to say. It's like, okay, we all go through toxic type of relationships and it's a growing pattern, but I don't think it's cute. Or it means that someone loves you if they're telling you, I I'll pull a gun out on you so you won't leave. That level of possessiveness, that, t that, that level of possessiveness is unhealthy. And for anyone looking, I think what's important is when we see stuff like this, it's important to, for us who have platforms to talk about it because somebody might see that and think it's okay. But if they don't see the opposite, or if they don't see anybody saying, hey, y'all saw what Ari said, don't do that. That's not right here. Let me tell you why. Now, the person may still go on and have that experience because, you know, just the way that men and women are, are socialized to relate to each other. And then this, um, the, the, the music and the media and things like that influencing and making things that are toxic, cute, and these blogs that are always asking these, re these weird random relationship questions that are like really toxic type of scenarios. And it's, it's like it's being promoted to, and it's for some reason the idea that somebody loves you because they want to possess you. It's just really a weird idea of love and companionship. And I think some people just have to learn it. Some people just have to learn it. But I hope that Ari Fletcher never, experience, it never experiences what she said she didn't care about. Because the universe has a funny way of allowing you to experience what you frowned on. I'm just saying. So it is what it is. It is what it is. Another story that I have saved here is Coach Stormy defends how she treated her daughter. Um, my mom would have beat my M, F, and A. That's what I need to do. Don't let a holiday come by Thanksgiving and Christmas. You don't holler at your mama and your granddaddy now. And y'all up there acting like these children. Children is right. Storm That's not the motherfucking problem. Stormy know she look like the baby. <laughs> She know she looked like an old leprechaun. I would have came up my house and beat my motherfucking ass as an adult. She said her mama would have came over and beat her ass as an adult. You Gen Xers, you know Stormy is more than likely a Gen X or an old ass millennial. <sighs> Y'all and these baby boomer antics, thinking because you turned out okay that you can do the same shit your parents did and raise healthy children is is wrong it's just wrong and you so ignorant and that's the thing it's like you got all this money and your brain your brain ain't rich your brain is still broke broke as fuck that's the that mentality 
of how raising children, that's a broke bitches mentality, Stormy. Bitches who have, have, have money up here, money up here, who have an understanding that you don't parent children with a heart, with a hierarchical parenting system. You don't do that. You don't, you don't get to act like you're better than because you're the parent. You don't get to act like that. You don't tell somebody, my mama would have whooped my ass if I didn't. That's not at, as an adult. That's nothing to brag about. That's toxic. That's not healthy. That's not healthy at all. And then you on the internet and the poor girl, like I said, that y'all, y'all love quoting the scripture um, honor the parents and all this other stuff. But it also, there's a, the scripture says, don't bring your child to anger. Don't bring your children to anger. That's what it says. Y'all always conveniently forget that part. i would noticed that all the time. Don't bring your children to anger. Yeah, they, your children should honor you, but if you anger them, more than likely, they're not going to honor you. You get it? So it's a two-way motherfucking street. I didn't like it. I didn't like Stormy. Um, <laughs> Stormy, I said, she's more likely a Gen Xer who is still believing that the remnants of her baby boomer parents' toxic upbringing bodes well for children, even though it does psychological damage to them. After a while, she'll stop trying to be bend the bendable child to accommodate Stormy's to toxic hierarchical parenting style you'll get your things and leave. She's going to get tired of it. And there's no amount. Let me tell you something. That's another thing. There's no amount of money, parents. There's no amount of money your child has to stay around for to endure your abuse. After a while, they're going to get tired of it. After a while, she's going to get tired of it. So here, let's see. Here. Thanksgiving and Christmas, you don't holler at your mama and your granddaddy now. And y'all up there acting like these children is right. That's y'all the motherfucking problem. Y'all the motherfucker problem talking to these children like they right. People need to speak some truth, goddammit. My mama would have slapped. My mama would have killed That's one ignorant lady. Ass, as an adult. She's a rich, my ignorant ass, ass woman. Bring your motherfucking ass outside. And my mama would have drugged my motherfucking ass. Broke mama. bitch mentality. Mama would have let you give a fuck how old you would. Bitch, I'm going to get your motherfucking ass outside. My mama would have beat my motherfucking ass. That's what I did. There's her daughter. Keep doing this damn and trying to make me feel like I'm a bad person. That shit is whack. She's good at what she does. This is what y'all don't understand. This lady is the number one network marketer for a reason. She knows what she's doing. She knows how to make y'all see things in a way at which you can relate. She got people texting me talking about, um, I don't know what's going on or whatever, but me and my mom is going through something too, and I feel really bad. You don't want to lose your mom. All this other cap, like, yes, I understand that. Her favorite scripture is honor thy mother and thy father so that whatever your days could be long. Y'all don't think I understand that? I try. At first, I thought it was my fault why our relationship wasn't good. I thought it was me. I thought the inner things that I was dealing with within myself was why me and my mom was not doing good. Come on, baby. That's cap. It's not just me. Come on, baby. It's not just me. It's not just me. It says, so did y'all catch her live when she challenged all the leaders and left her team after taping of the show to get money and have success without her? She literally called everyone out by name and said she ain't none of y'all going to shoot or fight. Let's if y'all can make it up. Make I don't know what the fuck they be talking about, child. I don't understand what the words say, but she went off on her mom. She sent her a message to her mom saying, you don't have to worry about me ever, ever again. And she just replied, thank you. She just replied, thank you. I don't even feel like, I can't even read this. So did y'all catch her live when she challenged all the leaders that left her team after the taping of the show to get money and have success without her? She literally called everyone out by name and said, ain't none of y'all going to shoot or fight. Let's, if y'all can make it with your coach, tag all of the asses to this live and tell them to get, and tell them they get what? And tell them, get they money up me. I dare any of y'all, including my daughter, since I don't train her no more too. Let's see how y'all doing without me. Coach was very lit the other day, but let her live, but her live was 
fucking up. She went off. I don't understand what they're saying. I don't understand. All I know is if you are parenting your child from a hierarchical parenting style, that's broke bitch mentality. You may have a lot of money in the bank, but your brain is still broke if you're if you're parenting your children like that. If you have all that money, you need to use your resources to take some parenting classes and understand that baby boomer approach to parenting is dead. It's dead. It's fucking dead. And you'll lose your children like that. There are a lot of baby boomers out here who do not have relationships with their children because they were the fucking toxic ones. They were the toxic ones. They operated in a place where they acted like they could do no wrong. You heard her say, y'all act like these children are right. And the children be right. The children be fucking right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always an adult fucking with some fucking kid and then everybody coming to the kid and, and, and ba basically making the kid acquiesce to what the adult wants. Oh, that's just your mom. That's just not. No, fuck that lady is fucking crazy. I'm not fucking with her. And she has a way to show y'all something that you can relate to. And now she got people calling her, telling her, oh, that's your mom. You should make a no. That bitch is toxic. Her brain is still broke, broke bitch, ghetto hood mentality. She got all the commas in the bank account, but this still broke, still broke, still broke. If you, if you're parenting your children like that, you broke, period. I don't give a fuck what y'all say. And that's all I got to say about that shit. The fuck? Yeah. Tammy Roman on the real world, you know, reunion, they're doing, they're all staying in the house. Tammy, oh God. And Glenn got into it. Tammy was telling the story. Tammy was tell hold on let me get to the let me get to um no Glenn was telling the story and he used he said nigga he said nigga and Tammy said you can't say that out your white ass mouth he's like but that's what they call him she said I know you could have said the n word but you didn't wait I'm trying to find a damn clip hold on child and then the girl and then Irene come around and says it again. It's too much. It's too much. Hold on. Here we go. Hold on. I, I want to, I need the whole clip. Oh, here it is. Here it goes. I can't really play it here. I'm, I'm just going to play a small portion of it. Cause you know, I don't want to get a copyright strike, but I'm just going to just play a copy copyright. I mean, I'm just going to play a copy. <laughs> I'm just going to play it. Okay. Hold on. friend John and I went to that pizza place right and they called him a Beth looked around baby everybody looking around like did he just say what we thought he said Tammy is sitting in the damn doorway the first time I really Tammy said you could have said the n-word he said but that's what they call him she said let me tell you something I don't understand what you don't understand, nigga. Don't say that out your white ass mouth. You cannot say that. Then Irene gets her happy ass up and says, Do you, here, let me play what Irene said. Hold on. You don't have no idea what it is to be a nigger, okay? That's what she said. Irene, girl, what the fuck? Y'all just want to say it. It's so funny. It's y'all want to say it. Y'all live this life giving everything. And y'all cannot take that there is a one word in the fucking lexicon that you cannot say. And you cannot stand it. So whenever you get an opportunity to say it, you say it. Girl, if we're not, I don't even, I don't even think in academic spaces, teachers that are non-black would use the N-word. If, even if what we're talking about has nigga in it, the teacher is not going to say it. I don't know. I just think I I don't even know what to say. It was like Tammy was like, Tammy was looking at Tammy had her cigarette in her mouth, right? Baby, wait, let me get my cigarette. Hang her, her cigarette in her mouth. You know how the you know how the people be holding a cigarette? Like I don't <laughs> Tammy was like, and don't you say it either. You Latina. <laughs> Tammy told Irene, you don't get to say it either. You're Latina. Girl, what the fuck? What's wrong with y'all? That shit was crazy. Wait, here, Tammy. I, I, I can't. Do not ever say that. You don't say it either. 
<laughs> you don't say it either. Cause you Latina. Girl. Tell me. And then and then David, the other black person in the room who happens to be a black man, he's sitting there half sleep. And then when Irene says that, that nigga starts that nigga starts laughing. He didn't he didn't tell anybody not to say it. He's sitting there laughing. Once again, I was like, David, it's just the epitome of it. Here's this black woman, girl, with a cigarette in her mouth, her bonnet on, trying to go outside and have her a smoke. And here comes Glenn talking about nigga this. Oh, my friend, my friend John got called a nigga. She was like, don't say that. Why are you saying that you can't say that? Why you just didn't say the N-word? Well, that's what they called him. She said, okay, I understand. With I Basically, if you say N-word, I'm going to understand what you meant, fool. Everybody's going to understand what you, you don't need to say it. And she said, she said, that, that don't need... What did she say? That don't need here. Here, I'm gonna play it for you. She said, "You shouldn't say it out of your mouth." She said, "He said, um, Glenn said, if they called him that, they called me that." She said, "They weren't calling you that." <laughs> here we go. They called me that when they called him that. She was like, "They didn't call you that." <laughs> And David looking at Tammy like this. You could have said, David, the other black person in the room, hey, Glenn, we don't, it's cool, bro. Just don't say it. You already know. Don't say it. That's all he had to say. But Tammy is up there. The word nigga should not come out your white ass mouth. That's what Tammy told his ass. Period. Period. The fuck is wrong with y'all? And she told it, and David sitting there laughing. And then when I, Irene stood her ass up, David sitting over there laughing. As soon as she said it, this is literally what she said. No you don't have, you have no idea. You don't have no idea what it is to be a nigger. Tell me, sir. Girl, I can't. Okay, whatever. You don't say it either because you Latina. <laughs> this is a mess. This is a mess. Tammy was over it. And then, what's his name? What's the fat one? The the white one? What's his name? Not um here, hold on. Let me get let me get his name. I can't remember. The cowboy. God damn it. What is his name? Um what's his name? Hold on. Let me get his name. Hold on. Uh, 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 uh. No, 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 no. We want season. We want season, uh, John, it's John, it's John, I think that's John, with the, with the cowboy hat on, yeah, that's John, yeah, that's John, and then John turns around and says, he had, I guess he, I don't know if he has black kids in his family, or if they're adopted, or what, or, you know, by marriage, or whatever, but he said something about their, their colored black, Tammy said, don't say that to them. He says, well, they call each other worse. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let me tell you something. Every, like in communities, they take words that have been used against them and switch them to as a term of endearment. And other people are like, oh, no, other community does that. The gay community does that. The gay community does that. Take words that were used to men some and they'll use it together. You could, and, and they'll use it together. Women, the word bitch, we use it together. You, as a man, you don't, you don't belong to this community. You don't get to say bitch to me. And especially if we don't have a relationship, you definitely don't get to say bitch to me. I don't give a fuck. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. That's a, we are a community who have taken a word and change the meaning of it you don't get to say it because when you say it, it doesn't change the meaning and it will never change the meaning coming out of your mouth yes the same word means two different things coming out my black ass mouth and coming out your white ass mouth the same word you cannot say it and i understand that you have all the privilege and the power especially as a white man that you feel like there's nothing in this world that nobody can tell you what you can't do because you are a white man in america but let me tell you something don't say nigga. And like this lady on Twitter, 
said to me, we could say it, we could say it to you if we want to or not. So say it to my face. And if I pull your trachea out of your throat, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. It's freedom of speech. Okay, it's freedom of consequence too. So you will have some people, and I love black people be like, say it again. We'll be giving you another chance. I'm telling, I'll be telling y'all, don't give them no more chance. As soon as they say it, boom, that's the reaction. I'm sorry, I was triggered. I was triggered. Sorry. Sorry, I'm triggered by that word. Sorry, the ancestors came up in me and threw my fist, and that's just what it is. <laughs> that's just what it is. I'm sorry, the word triggers me. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, I think that was it for our hot topic. Mm. Tammy Roman. Oh, yeah, that's something that I do want to talk about, but we'll talk about it later. I know this is New Year's Eve, so if we don't talk or see each other, have a happy New Year. Um, make all your wishes and your resolutions and everything. Enjoy your time with your family and loved ones and all of that, that stuff and your chosen family this evening if you're not staying at home. And Happy New Year to you all. Peace. Take care of each other and protect your energy.